ಯೇನಾಕ್ಷರಸಮಾಯಮಧಿಗಮ್ಯ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರಾತ್ ಕೃತ್ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಪಾಣಿ ನಯೇ ನಮಃ ಯೇನ ಧೌತಾ ಗಿರ ಪುಂಸಾ ವಿಮಲೈಶ್ಶಬ್ದಾರಿ ತಮಶ್ಚಾಜ್ಞಾನಜಂ ಭಿನ್ನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಪಾಣಿ ನಯೇ ನಮಃ ವಾಕ್ಯಕಾರಂ ವರರುಚಿ ಭಾಷ್ಯಕಾರ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಪಾಣಿ ಸೂತ್ರಕಾರಂಚ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಮುನಿತ್ರ ಅಯುಣ ರುದ್ರಕ ಏಂ ಅಯೌಚ್ ಹಯವರಟ ಲಣ ನ್ಯಮಗಣ ನಮ ಝಭಯ ಘಟಧಶ ಜಬಗಟಧಶ ಖಾಫಾಠಟತವ ಕಪಯ ಶಶಸರ ಹಲ ಇ ಮಾಹೇಶ್ವರ ಸೂತ್ರ ಅಥ ಪ್ರಥಮೋಧ್ಯಾಯ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಪಾದ ವೃದ್ಧಿರಾಧೈ ಅದೇಂಗುಣ ಇಕೋ ಗುಣವೃದ್ಧಿ ನಾತು ಲೋಪ ಆರ್ಧ ಧಾತು ಕೇತಿ ದೀಧೀ ವೇ ವೀಟಾ ಹಲೋನಂತರ ಸಂಯೋಗ ಮುಖನಾಸಿ ವಚನೋನು ನಾಸಿ ತುಲ್ಯಾಯತ್ನ ಸವರ್ಣ ನಾಜಲೌ ಈದೂ ದೇವಚನ ಪ್ರಗೃಹ್ಯ ಅದಸೋಮಾತ್ ಶೇ ನಿಪಾತ ಏಕಾಜನಾಂ ಓತ್ ಸಂಬುಧೌ ಶಾಕಲ್ಯೇತಾವನಾರ್ಷೆ ಊಯ ಊ ಈದೂತ ಸಪ್ತಮ್ಯರ್ಥೆ ರಾಧಾಘ್ವದಾದ್ಯಂತವೇಕಸ್ಮಿನ್ತರಪ್ತಮಪೌಘ ಬಹುಗಣವತುಡತಿ ಸಂಖ್ಯಾಷ್ಟ That was the last one we learned, Shnanta Shirta. So let, let's type out, no, no clusters in this sutra. Pretty simple. As far as, it's not a simple one to type. Go to. And to understand the meaning, let's back up a few lines. Bahu gantava de kase dadha gwada These are just one sutra things. Designation of ku for these roots. Adhyantava de kasmin is a meta rule about the interpretation of sutras. You treat a single vowel as both its beginning and its end. Then we have Taraptama Pao Ghaha, that's another cover, cover term, Ghaha, for these specific suffixes. Bahu Garna Vatu Rati, a list, a compounded list of those four stems. Also, let's see. Yeah, is called a Sankhya, is added to the class of numerals, Sankhya numeral. So one thing we should be thinking about is when do we get a, a true M consonant, both letter and sound, and when do we get this anuswara? Sankhya. In grammar means numeral. Okay, in the recitation when he does the Shiva Sutras, the Itmargas sound like they still have the vowel. They do. I hear a schwa, even though it's written with a let. It is. Uh, that's probably to make it maximally distinct. Just, and it's just for the recitation. I think different pundits differ, or maybe there's different traditions. In the s that, it, I think the, the first three bits that we have here are by different pundits. So there's a little bit of difference. It'll be in the recitation of the sutras. He doesn't do as much of that, but I think it's to make like differences between dental T and retroflex T nice and clear. But you're right, it diverges from the, from what's written in that point. It does affect the melody though, whether you have a vowel in those markers or not. Tau ca saptam yarthe 
The marker, this suffix rdati, is also in the class of a shart numeral. It inflects like the numeral six. So shart is the nominative singular for six, and he's using it in grammar to mean a set of numeral. Words. Subset of the numerals. And the cha means that is also true of this thing that's being introduced, dati. That, okay, I've pasted that. Good. Datu gana vatu dati sankhya shnanta shate dati cha takta vatu nishta. And do two at a time. This one also is just assigning a label, a cover term, for a set of markers. And we do get some nice clusters here. The next sutra. So, Levi, can you transliterate today's sutra? Oops. <laughs> what shall we do today? Do the Arabic to start with. Letob. Letob. Same underlying vowel in those two syllables. Letob. E a. The. Da. Okay, now this is. The. Right, it's voiced interdental. So, in this style. I think it varies from place to place. But D H capital makes good sense for that. Da. Be an emphatic one. It's got tongue body lowering, right? It's not a but aw. The. The. Nerdati jug tuk tavatu nishta. Bingo. Nailed it. Exactly right. Good. Letob. All right. Let's briefly. Can you recite for me the soup? All 21, please. Let's go row by row. Anta shate, dati cha, taktavatu nishta, saruvadi ni saruvana mani, takta. So, we should talk about kta and ktavatu. These are not words, but names of suffixes, derivational ones. I'll tell you a bit of what I understand about them. Ktavatu. Kta is the first suffix, and ktavatu is the second. This has a short u. The long u in the sutra is an adesha, it's a replacement of. Au. Which means it is nominative dual. So that tells us, right, like we were just starting to learn about the Agni paradigm for fire, the fire god. Agnihi, singular. 
And then it's not owl. There is no owl herd in the dual form. It's Agni. 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 And then Agnayaha. Like this are the nominative forms. So instead of owl, we get a lengthening of the stem vowel. When we add Jess, which becomes Aha. We don't get just e. It would that would give agnia with n y. This i remember is equivalent to e. It's just an allophone. Of, oh, okay, doesn't like that. The sequence a y comes before a vowel. It's the same thing as a before a consonant or before zero. Very always equivalent. Su o jes um old shes da pyam pis nge pyam pyas. Yeah. Tabato nishta. Okay, and let's hear him. So I'll just um old shes da pyam pis nge pyam pyas. Nasi biham pius, naso sam, ni osup. Right, missing the nasi one there. So I'll just am our chas tabiam. So I'll just am our chas tabiam pis, ni piam pius. That's dative. Uh, we need ablative next. And nas is genitive. We get three pyams. That longest ending occurs three times there in the middle of the paradigm. Before we get to nasos. So it's n as is indicatory, so I'm gonna capitalize it. Nasi. Pyam. Oh, it's I could just look in the chart. Nasi pyam pyas. The e at the end, yeah, that one. And that's the E at the end there is also indicatory, but I want to show it's not an L. Let's see. Uh, I believe it's for the names of morphemes, two it letters is the max. All right, and kta we got to talk about. Uh, we have it, I think, in English too, the cognate. But tell me what this reminds you of. From a verb root, rich, meaning leave, leave behind. We have rikta, a, nom a participial stem left. What does this remind you of in other languages? Uh, from yuj, roots that we know. Yuj, the yoke root, we have the form yukta, meaning joined. From Buddha, these are all instances of the kta suffix. The root Buddha to awaken. The participle is Buddha. The different phonetic shape, different surface form with D D H, but it they all reflect kta, so just an allomorph of it there. I'm using plus and the hyphen interchangeably, just whatever makes it clearest. Letob. 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 Kit. Kit. That one has the e, short e vowel underlyingly. Kit. Due to the lowering of the tongue body, or central vowel, I think, Lo uh, mid central. Lavob. Lavob. Past participle. That's it. What would we have in English and in Latin corresponding to that? There's other ones too. German zat. Satisfied belongs with this. Satisfied. Satiated. Historically, it contains this kta. 
call to call it sort of um, anachronistically by the Sanskrit name because it's convenient. But this one, if German has it, sad, fat, are English ones that have it as part of their makeup. Right. Sad is the same word as zat, in having had enough of a thing. So the basic shape here, the final consonant is a th, the emphatic t. The dotted one is also emphatic, but it's different in being fricative and in being voiced. Qibla. The basic is a emphatic T, capital. Not quite. So for Rikta, we have that in derelict. The double prefix, D, Re behind from the red. Lictus. Oh, so what would it be from? Fakere. From this verb, what would it be? What would be the participle that corresponds? That's the one, exactly. Fakus. Oh, we have it. We have a nice. Well, it's not the full set, but we have a nice pair in English. Data, datum. Stratum, stratum. Those ones with a T before the ending, A or U, M. So a good candidate for the proto-language would be just to. Greek has to suffixes with slightly different meanings though to like more like to be done i think but what these things do is deriving an, is derive a nominal stem from a verb root ktabatu that is true as well ktabatu is based on this one that we're looking at ktabatu is indicatory it means having done verb having verb And the U, okay, the K letter, let's talk about that, the one that they both share. It, that's redundant, the one that these two share. K tells you to keep zero grade at the root. The default rule is if when you is when you add a suffix to a verb root, the root will be in Gurna. That's not true in this. We say rikta, not rikta, yukta, not yokta. So the K indicatory letter tells you to, tells tells you, tells the computer to turn that rule off and keep it in zero grade. So from these roots that we looked at here, it would be Rikdawan in the nominal singular. Yukdawan, having yoked. A full paradigm for this, because this is a nominal thing now. And the indicatory U in Kitabatu is about the insertion of that N into the stem before the T. Yuktavantam would be the accusative. So the U just guides the mind to certain sutras that say Udit, having U as the indicatory letter. And as I right, Rosa wa enna muallima. I am. I am Rosa, and I. No verb to be in Arabic. Just teacher, feminine. Quit. Quit. Oh, for bud, for that root, it would be budhawan. So Bhagwan is, is a similar suffix in its makeup. Um, I think, I kind of feel like the Padawan of Star Wars may have been inspired by this Tawan of Sanskrit. It's a short vowel and it's voiced for sure. 
I can hear that as a fricative. The short vowel will be the. this. This would be with a long vowel, the. Cut here, cut both emphatic consonants. And le, the, le, 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 Okay, hard to hear, but that's what the dot above the emphatic T tells us. It's this, this DH letter. Cool. So, welcome back to Lango Institute. I'm your verb ally. We just did a round of Arabic. Well, talking about some Sanskrit here in the chat and listening to some recitation. So, Aujas, Am Aut Shas, Tabiham Bis, Ne Biham Bis, Nasi Biham Bis, Naso Sam, Ne Osop. Bonjour. First time here, welcome. What uh, languages? Here, welcome. What uh, oh, languages? No, no thanks. What are uh, languages? That's looking into the mirror there. Bienvenue. What was I going to say? What languages are you most interested in? Because I'm here to do all of them on Duolingo. Try to read these. Now, there's three similar shaped ha, right? There's, I think this one with the dot below is a J letter, but let's review. Okay, the emphatic H is the basic one, ha, and then we have, that's the velar, ha, and with the thing below is a J, below the line, with the dot below the line, ja. So I, I have I struggle to keep these two straight in my memory. Ha versus ja from sight. But anyway, this one's gonna be Jedda looks like and Jed for the grandparents versus Zau Zauja. Zauja. So Zauja really would mean spouse. The feminine form here with no suffix it's it means husband. Grandfathers, this jed. Jed. Jedda. Zauja. The a at the end of those nouns is the feminine mark. Jed. Is one of them. Zaujua zauja. Zaujua zauja. It's nice with the repeated zauja. Z shapes. Kind of cool looking. Husband and a wife. Zaujua zauja. Zaujua zauja. Zauja. And there too. So they're very it's very economical really from a single shape it's common to get two or more different phonemes represented. Ra, ra the basic R one on top versus za same shape with the dot on top. Nukta is what the dot is called. Jedda. Jedda. We can hear the long D very clearly there. Jedda. Can't do the emphatic consonants well. You could just darken the vowel. Well, it's fine by me. Can one say just va? It sounds perfectly cromulent and acceptable, yes, I would say. But I'm certainly no native speaker or even competent user of Arabic. Let's ask 
whenever the next time we meet an Arabic speaker, what they think. But what it involves is, like I say, lowering of the tongue, maybe constriction in the pharyngeal area. Oh. So that I can you do you feel you can do the ein letter, where there's also two distinct letters. Here you write a G. It's not a G though. Ah, for the basic one versus G, velar fricative, which is voiced. Ah, how do you feel on that? If you feel conf competent at that ah, you just add that sort of a gesture to these co consonants to make them emphatic. Is one way to approach it. Okay, good. When the pharyngeal is a single motion, got it. It's the combination. Well, one place to listen for it, to how it alters a consonant, is in the divine name, which really is double L there. It's a sequence represented specifically as a sequence of three L's, and that means a dark emphatic L is there. I believe only occurring in that one. Noun stem. To my knowledge that's why so a consonant letter doubles in arabic without having to write it twice there's that doubling mark which we see in jed uh, so we wouldn't do that but it's called shedda or tashdid and here there's going to be a button for it no doubt there it is it means double this consonant but in the divine name it's always written two L letters, and one, the second of them is doubled. So three L phonemes there. Awfully far away. Okay. Binti wa zaujati. Okay, so zaujati. These are possessive ones. Binti. My daughter. The T feminine. Yeah, this is very cool. So here we see is a place to observe a fact about derivational versus inflectional morphology. Bint, and then E is inflectional, means daughter mine. And the bint is not just a single stem like we have an English daughter, but has a structure to it, a root or stem bin with a feminine deriving T. Binti. The word has three parts, but the relation of suffix to to, the, to that to the base to which it's added is different in each case. Here it's signifying gender in a noun, whereas this one is marking possession. It's not really part of the word the way bint is. The T of bint is part of the word. Binti wa zaujati. Zaujati. Wa means and, and it's written connecting with the following one. Zauj. Zauja. On its own, we would write an H there. That wasn't historically or unilingually, it's not an H, it's a T suffix. That's the old Semitic or Proto Afro or one <laughs> Proto Afro Asiatic feminine marker, because Egyptian has it too. Was Zauja T. Okay, and to be consistent, I'm going to use the dot for the first boundary, dash for the second. The square brackets for nouns. Zojati. My daughter and my wife. And we see so the T and T and et suffix that alternate those things are derivational suffixes. We derive a new word, whereas the E is an example of an inflectional suffix. No, not much at all, no, just that one. It's about the extent of it. <laughs> but I'm happy to bring it in to the stream if you wanted to do a, if you wanted to lead a session on it from time to time. Jeddi Mohandis. Jeddi means my grandfather Mohendis. Because my grandfather is inherently definite, we don't need the article to know that this is the subject of a sentence and not 
just a noun phrase with an adjective follow or some other thing following. My engineer grandfather, I think. My father grandfather is Mohendis. An engineer. Zoji Mahmoud Muhasib Saria. Zoji Mahmoud, my husband Mahmoud. Mo Hasib Suriya. Muhasib. 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 Okay, you wanna do you wanna uh, is there a way to lead? We could do this on um what's it called? That other app thing. Uh Discord. But yeah, let's see what's over there. Yeah, I didn't I didn't actually have a chance to check it out after you recommended. So let's do it now. Actually, let's open the other one too. Good to have handy. Let's see what we're dealing with. The marks will encounter. So I don't know that I've ever seen this one in any other system. Looks like a Vietnamese glottal tone marker on this one. Probably is an Ein phoneme. If, okay, the three H's, who knows what they are. Sh, K, I believe, emphatic K, but also Q. Okay, yeah, I'll try. Uh, we might need a little guidance from you, but let me let her rip here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do ancient Egyptian. How cool! Yeah, this will be. We'll get to uh, what's the word? Capture all of our Egyptian learning here. So what do I need to do to get started with this? Wait, not the mat. I want to do B then. Alright, I've got the sound turned on, I think. Yeah. Awaiting guidance or instruction. Zoji Mahmoud Muhasib Sariya. Muhasib was a Muhasib. Saria, fast. Saria. Saria in a hurry. Yeah. All right, my husband Mahmoud. Is yeah. This is a sentence too. We had a complex subject noun phrase with the noun and the name. The noun being possessed, the husband one, and then. The rest of the sentence, accountant who is fast, is the comment on it. There's a fast one, rather. Accountant. Muhasib. Zoji Mahmoud Muhasib Saria. Speaking of derivational inflectional, we have inflection or derivational prefixes too in Arabic. Asib. Accountant. Zaujati spouse female line. I believe so. I'm looking at a welcome mat, although it shows Lango Institute as online. Is that me? I don't think any other account has been here. Uh, do I need to click one of these? Let me put it in this thing for you to see. Should I invite you? Okay, click. Okay. Click verb ally in the voice channels. Voice. Da, 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 da. Where can I find that? Text channels, voice channels. Thank you. So much. <laughs> we got there. <laughs> so I uh, see. Hey, hi there. 
Can you hear me? I, I believe I can. So, how you doing? Uh, no. I'm okay. Okay, I've got. I'm gonna turn off the audio of this stream. Hang on. Sounds like a winner. Okay. Uh, so I'll show you if you just click oh. on the Lexi logos main logo thing where it says words and wonders of the word. Yep. Uh, and then if you click on that, it says what's new, I think. Oh, cool. It did before. What's new? There it is. Yeah. And then, uh, that's cool. Might do that. that has a bunch of different things. Sidonian. Uh, and one of them, never heard of this. Uh -huh. one of the things in this list is, uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. Okay, hieroglyphs. Oh, nice. From March. That's awesome. Interactive translation of the Rosetta Stone. Yes, please. Swahili poetics and sociology of a young urban style with dictionary. Sounds awesome. New cursive font for Hebrew. Oh, okay. This, this is nerd heaven. Fair yeah, it went ahead and opened it in a new tab. So if that's what... We want the... I just you've probably, already opened it. Yeah. I, it's I, in I, a new tab. Should be seeing it forthwith. Okay, so these are all different things. Oh. If I were going to introduce hieroglyphics, I would really start with telling the uh, learning the uniliteral signs. Unil Do you know what those are? Mm. But I don't know if that's on this list. So okay, let's no, see. how can we find some uniliteral? So, oh, just oh. The, the ones for the basic letter. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, so this is, this okay. that you have open is the transliteration symbol. Yeah. So there is another uh, hieroglyphic keyboard. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah, another is. ancient it's, Egyptian one it. for... Yeah, I got it. For, that has the letter. Type of gardener code, uh, one consonant, one plus number. Okay. A, one type of space. Um, let me open it figure out what I need to do. All right, all right. I'll do a bit more Duolingo, and you... Uh, you want, let me know if you want to share screen also. That's... Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, let's but why don't you... So why don't you get ready? Yeah, yeah I'll poke around, and then... زوجي محمود محاسب سريع. محاسب سريع. Nice how convenient this is. جدتي محاسبة. Once you know where to go. جدتي محاسبة. All right, جدتي long D is very easy to perceive here. جدتي محاسبة. جدتي my grandmother. محاسبة female one accountant. My grandmother is a accountant. جدي وجدتي. جدي وجدتي. JD. So you can drop the doubling sign. Jeddi wa jeddi. So I'm going to do that. Just the sim single letters, no modifiers. Jeddi wa jeddi. And where did it go? <laughs> there it is. جدي وجدتي زوجي محمود محاسب زوجي محمود محاسب right. زوجي my husband محمود is محاسب جدي جورج جدي is my grandfather George is the name George. زوجتي أستاذة. زوجتي أستاذة. زوجتي, my wife, is 
It's got to be a sentence. Ustada, a uh, professor. Jeddati fi bayti. Jeddati fi bayti. My jeddati grandmother. Is fi bayti is in my house. So that's kind of cool because it's different from English. We've got fi bayti. One way it's the same. So I like to use the curly ones for prepositional phrases fi and square brackets for now. Now I'm going to show the possessive part in the noun phrase. Bait is house. E for my in my house. But in Arabic, in house my. House my in this order only as a single word. So in terms of the word for word order, it's different, or morphine by morphine, but in terms of the phrase order, preposition, noun phrase, that part is the same in both languages. Zaujati. Zaujati. My wife. Zawji Mahmoud Lubnani. Lubnani. Zawji Mahmoud Lubnani. My husband Mahmoud. All right, I hear a delightful noise. Is that... Okay. Uh, we're good. I found the uniliteral signs. Lebanese, Lebanese. All right. Uh, so, do you know how to share? Do I need to invite? Uh, let's see. I'm sharing it with you on Discord, but I don't know how to. Can you see my screen on Discord? Uh, looks like it's coming. Okay. Nice. Yep. Uh, Likely yours there. Okay. If you have this, uh. Then do you know how to put it onto uh, Twitch? Onto my stream. Well, I think if I just have it open in this browser, well, I think name. if I just have that's it open name. in this browser, well, I think name. if I okay. <laughs> do need to mute that. Can thing. it not full screen? Say again. Is it not full screen in the? Oh, I just have this uh, thing split, split up. Let me try this. What does that do? No, then I'm just. Well, what if I get rid? What if I put down? Does that go away? What do you think? Uh, is that good to read? Do you think? I think that looks okay. Can you see it good? If I'm watching this as a viewer and I don't have it full screen, I could see it on my end okay-ish but if you could zoom in a bit don't have, don't oh that's a good idea uh control plus usually control plus, control plus. do you work do you control plus at all it's not control plusing okay glottal uh, stop unknown in most western languages Alice. So they, you know, they don't know phonetics, so they're just trying to write their little easy for, you know, reader. Oh, yes, we don't know glottal stop. Uh, and so this is the bird, which is the glottal stop sound. Got it. Uh, well, one of the birds. There's a lot of different birds, as we birds. will see. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's a daunting I thing. think this is the falcon. You're, uh, it's kind of cutting in and out. So I think I, if you could just send me the link, I'll just go there on my browser to that particular page. Okay. That I'll should work better for us. I'll paste. And I'll go ahead and paste it in the chat so that... Uh, That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, if you want. Anyone uh, who wants to... Go, who is listening, can also go. Be so empowered, yeah. 
And then that way you can hide Discord and have this open in the big screen. And we can just use Discord for audio. Sounds like a way. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Feather shape E. Oh, this is not nice. The doubling for the consonant. Yeah. Uh, now this, yeah, it can be both the single and the double. Usually the uh, double is romanized as J or transcribed. Uh, but there is two different pronunciation standards. There is the reconstructed and the Egyptological. And since it's an Abjad writing system, the Egyptological pronunciation is you just stick like the letter E, like the mm -hmm. sound E, in for all of the vowels. And the reconstructed pronunciation is more complex than that, uh, where they tried to guess what the real vowels were. And the Egyptological one is much easier to find resources in. Uh -huh. Uh, I suppose you got to master them both, but for the consonants, are they the same? Uh, what do you they, mean? Same conventions, same spellings of cons consonants in the two systems? Uh, yeah, well, okay, so in the transcription, you actually don't write the vowels. They're just pronounced. Right. Uh, but yeah, these consonants are pretty... No, are they in the two... Uh, in the two in the two systems, though, are they the same consonants? Consonant symbols, I mean. Yeah, those two pronunciations I just described are just two different ways of, like, reading the hieroglyphics and pronouncing it. For sure. So it's not... You, they would both be romanized the same, and they would both... And it would use exactly the same letters and everything. But it's if they're just, but if they're reconstructing the vowels, they'd have to they mark those, don't they? So uh, if we're looking at a I haven't seen any that has that that has the vowels. Okay, I won't fear seeing it. But if you look up, like if you look up an Egyptian word in like Wiktionary, it does yeah. have vowels. Right. Let's go on a good idea. Pencil. Yeah. Let's do that again. Let's look at that elephant word that had one. Oh, we'll go to the Greek one, not the, yeah, to the nominative. Here we go. Either Egyptian, and there it has the hieroglyphs. So this clearly has no vowels. This is just the Egyptological transliteration with whatever that consonant is, B and W, right? Oh, is it? Yeah, and but if you click on that, it should tell you both the okay, reconstructed yeah. and Egyptological. Yeah. All right, from a B root... Terry avoid cease cessation. This word is usually negated. Okay. Or leb lb, likely related to a fingernail. All right. Now in the proto Afro Asiatic reconstruction, there's a vowel there, but that's not what we're talking. Oh, about. scroll Here we go. up. Up. Okay. If you scroll up to where, yeah, there that had it too. Where it said modern Egyptological as well as reconstructed. Yeah, I think uh, there's a bit of a delay in the visual. Let's see. Okay. I think I'm past it now, though. Yeah, let me see. just. Modern, okay, reconstructed with IPA, Rubau. Becoming, oh, a whole sequence. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Oh, how fantastic. Yeah. Looks like some linguists have, work, have worked on this. <laughs> but then Egyptological mm. is just like a technical... Now, this one has vowels too, though, with IPA. So, modern. Okay, so this Yeah, is third, it's third. written out, but it's you can see how the different schools, uh, like, oh, the Egyptologists pronounce it one way, yeah. and the people who have worked on it historically pronounce it another. So a wide... Because the written history is so long, it's quite a... Uh, quite a diversion, you know, quite a development in the sounds. Let's look at this. Ooh, mm -hmm. Looks like a stress mark there. Ooh, bow. 
becoming I don't perceive any change here but I guess they have worked out discrete phases with the initial ra becoming ya yu ba and the diphthong being wow that's quite a, okay but it is still vc when you go from an out to up with a glottal stop not too straightforward but just a raising of the vowel and then change of one glide into a different kind of consonant and then that becoming a one syllable thing with weakening of the voice stop like you see in Celtic and in Spanish I could buy that <laughs> that looks very plausible and this is that word uh, it's written right elephant. there right the, the yeah. baby bird and the uh, elephant right I, yeah here we go let's get in a little closer Abu. So that baby bird, the sort of the younger bird, is mm -hmm. or quail chick is the official name of it. It's kind of a ooh or a w sound. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, let's okay, let's return to this. Let's look it up here. This one. Yeah. W or U. That I can buy. This sign usually approaches the y at the beginning of words. I'm reading now on the feather shaped e. But it, som it sometimes represents the sound capital A. The sign is not interchangeable with the previous. Okay. Well, it reminds me of that long A vowel in Arabic that's written with a ya yeah sign. Normally mm. used under specific conditions in the last syllable. I wonder if it was a ya, a geminate ya. And that's why it was why it's restricted and why mm. it's also got the double mark. Short A. Guttural sound unknown in Western languages. I, oh, okay, that's I. Know. Elbow, looking thing, and then a foot for B, mouth for P. Snake is F, owl is M. And Lock, careful, baby. this B letter. I think it's a lower leg because yeah. I think there is one that's just good. a foot. Ah, excellent. Good, good. You've been around the block. All right, then what do you and mean? And this F is the snake is the horned viper. There's also a snake with no horns. <laughs> cool. All right, so do you know a way that we, if we wanted to, just sort of practice representing things with these? Do you know how we would look them up on any any place? I do know if you go. Ah, uh, but this doesn't have their language. Uh, Hieroglyphs keyboard the five thousand. That's what's up. <laughs> Right. That's cool, but you have to know their gardener codes. Okay. And is that Are you familiar with the gardener code system? Course, no, of course I'm not. Okay, where it says or select a gardener list, if you click on that. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, uh that says Oh, how cool. <laughs> so there'll be a letter, right? And each letter represents a category. And so, like, A is men, I think. Yeah, and... should be visible on stream in a few seconds for you. Man, woman, gods, parts of the human body, uh, mammals, parts of mammals, a psychopath's inventory, <laughs> Bird, yeah. parts of birds, <laughs> reptiles. So, for be... example, if you click on any of those letters, okay, it okay. should open beneath oh. all the ones in that category. This is what I want. This, yeah, great. looks great for looking up. Sort of Egyptian Tanzia families of graphs. How graceful these uh, this font is too. I love it. I look at this sort of uh, seal or sea lion looking one. Fish. That's a fish. You're telling me this is a fish. This guy. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes their descriptions of things are really strange. Let's go to the snakes. Oh, I don't want to select the language. I want uh, so that reptiles likely. Snake. That would be I. Yeah, reptiles. There's a snake here. with horns and a snake yep. without horns. As you say, okay, this one was the J, I think, right? It represents a J phoneme. And is this one a phoneme? the snake with horns? Is no, an the F sound? F. That's right. Horn. Okay. So now when I look at the letter F, I see the horns of the snake. But and the, the N, the, the, the other snake that you have on screen, that's yeah. the N. N, okay. Let me no, this that. says, 
Okay, this says it's ja. What's exactly? In yeah, that's right. That's what I remembered. It. No, in is the water. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. This Here is a ja. Right. You know what? Let's take a moment. Let's see if I. How does this look? If I grab my snakes and put them in the chat. It's awfully small, and I see it in a sort of light purple because it's a hyperlink, maybe? No. But it's not nothing. Uh, Can you oh. discern it there? <laughs> yeah, I think it is technically able to depict those. <laughs> okay, so this screen will control alive. plot. That one, it couldn't render. Say what? Uh, I have a dual monitor set up, and uh -huh. this screen will control plot, the one that has Twitch on it. Cool. But the other one won't. I see a screen thing. All right, let's do a bit more of Arabic here, but... Okay. No hurry. Let let's me come, think about back. how yeah. to show the uh -huh. Egyptian and do that, like, yeah, for right. next time or something. Oh, okay, if you like. Right. Or if you want to... Uh... Well, let's see. Let's see what we can find. Let's represent this Abu word if we can. Let's make it a challenge for today, if you don't mind. So how would we? Find okay. It? What's this first sign? Looks like a tall lamp, and then leg, leg the quail chick and the elephant. Seem like I know where. Well, the leg is B. The quail chick is U. The elephant is there for the meaning to tell you it means That's elephant. No doubt. Uh, so I don't know that first symbol. That's the only one I'm unsure about. Domestics funerary furniture. Love it. It's like shopping. All of these floor plans that are available. I can, we can now email an architect and say, I want a basic layout that is like this hieroglyph. <laughs> How convenient this Which thing. letter is that under? Okay, I'm looking at uh, Q. Domestics and funerary furniture. Q. Temple furniture is a different set. It seems like a furniture y thing. Hey, envy the people who got to work on this project. Looks like a lot of fun. And so this makes it really accessible, which is a real challenge to start studying uh, Egyptian. So how do you get and produce these characters? Here at least you can manipulate them electronically, which is a good start. Download and install the font Egyptus. Another time, perhaps. Okay, yeah, we can go back to Arabic for a little bit, and or Sanskrit, if you prefer. Uh, no doubt, yeah. Well, uh, I, like I said, let's set it for a challenge to ourselves today. Uh, to find these four to write an elephant. Be our first word that we cobble together. Let's, so let me try to find that leg, the lower leg one real quick. That will be... And then we'll circle back, as the kids are saying nowadays. So parts of the human body, I think. That drawer. Yep, lots of arms and various combinations. Some other unmentionable parts. There we go. There's a lower leg one. Is it the same one? It's kind of a different vibe. There's a leftward walking pair of legs and a rightward walking pair of legs. Looks like some numeral characters. <laughs> the guy getting impaled. Classic. Every alphabet should have those.
Which letter are you laughing at you'll now? See, or you'll see it in a second. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Let me tweet this. No, there's one where it's just like a leg, like a disembodied leg, and yep. then it, like a jar of water that's pouring <laughs> stuff out. <laughs> just sitting on top of the disembodied leg. <laughs> like you do. <sighs> oh, it looks like a disembodied mouth here. Upper mouth. <laughs> Let's let me find the. Is it in? Oh, the here. Set? This is a. Yeah. That's I don't know where it is. Uh, oh, you found it. Yeah. All right. So that's part. Of it. Okay. Let's do some. So a related and some sort okay. of a related. Writing. I found a good resource. Uh -huh. All right. Great. Let me. Uh, I'll put it. I'll get it and put it in the chat. That's good. Type a code, and does this code refer to the same? It's the same gardener type stuff. Uh, the gardener code is going to be made up of a letter and then a number. To specify one uh, set. Okay, yeah. So if I just point at him, does it tell me? Not really. I guess there's a certain book you got to have, huh? I do have various books. Yeah, let me uh, pull together what I've got collected in this topic uh -huh. make it another project I've always kind of wanted to and having a font form having a way to manipulate them it seems like as complex as Chinese in terms uh -huh. of or even yeah. almost more like Japanese because you have both phonetic and semantic characters it's like imagine if Japanese was written instead of with a syllabary with an abjad and Very cool. Yeah. Anyone can learn how to read Egyptian hieroglyphs, and I'm here to help you. All right. Cool. Well, I mean, we are doing Duolingo, trying to learn languages. Would this be entertaining enough to do on stream, or what do you think? If so I think lesson one shows you the like the order to read. Yeah. Oh yeah, transliteration. Um, yeah, let's, let's... And then there's some actual grammar stuff coming up in following lessons once you can read a little bit. This looks excellent, yeah. But I'm not that much further along than Understood. you are. I know my uniliteral signs itch and then Sounds good though. All right, a boy and a grandfather. Well, now that we could, now that we're already audio, do you want to chip in here? Yeah. How to be you? So this one is. Uh, I don't know the words, but I'll I'll chip in whenever I have a question or comment. That sounds good too. Uh, the, what's the Hebrew for boy? This this one's cognate. Uh, yelling. Mm -hmm. And here, this one just starts with a wa. Weather. Wallet. And do you remember grandfather? Uh, the Hindi word is coming to my mind, which is not what we need. Jed with the double D. Wallet okay. Wajed. So first same apparent first consonant, these two same last, different in the middle. Waled Wajed. But a different structure. A grandmother, grandfather, and a grandmother. What would that be? Uh -huh. Here we'll see the unsuffixed form. Jed, wa jed, jedda. So JDH. And if we made them possessive, 
It wouldn't be Jed the He with an H, but Jed the T. Perfecto. Okay. Lesson one. Day 99 today on this project, and lesson one for Egyptian. This one. <laughs> Hieroglyphs could be arranged in both columns and rows, read left or from the right, from the left or from the right, depending on how written. This allowed the ancient Egyptians to effortlessly integrate their writing with art, blurring the boundaries. Yeah, very like Chinese. For in the example below, they got Amun Iman Iman. It's written with each of the possible combinations. Oh, excellent. E, ma, na, and then a determinative. Determinative. That's cool. So let me, let's relate this to this chart here. E. Is it the feather? Yeah, the feather, and then this Lego brick for M. Oh, instead of this, uh, can I recommend, I'm just sharing now, right the uh, wikipedia page which has ipa symbols as well absolutely let's compare these two sign color wow <laughs> polychrome what type of compound is this levi uh multicolor is the meaning that is the meaning no that's not the correct answer of the right. question though it's a first step uh, on the yeah multi or many yeah, multi means many. But it's a mini color having thing, uh -huh. not, you know, a color that is many. Sounds so it would be a bahuvri. It is indeed. And bahuvri there. Long vri. Bahuvri. That's the one. Exactly. I'm, I It just always delights me when I spot one unexpected. <laughs> like, like watching birds. I'm word watching. Polychrome. Greek is really full of them once you start. Take, keeping track of what kind of thing each is. Very common Greek and Sanskrit. And this elephant word, speaking of compound origins, go back a, a step here. Proto Berber, Elu, was the, for the first part. Elu, and either Egyptian, Abu, or Sanskrit, Ibha. Any way you cut it, that's pretty cool. So, whatever this, okay, this consonant letter with the double backwards C, what is that? Just let me search for that on this page. Polychrome Egyptian vulture is the consonant. So, if I go to. Uh, I think the color is optional. I don't think that's. Like, I don't think it's contrastive or anything. I think it just makes it look nice. That is significant. seems significant to me, and it might help in memory. I've never, and I've never used color as part of a linguistic system, so I'm very intrigued by it. I found when I was starting out with Chinese that, paradoxically, the more things you're throwing together to try to right, form a, some sort of cohesion in your mind, the more you add, the easier it gets. If you work with little, it's, it seems to me harder. So if I can add a color in the mix, it seems really cool and unique to me. So I'm going to try to do it. Okay, yeah, because the fonts don't have right. a color built right, in. Right. We just got to think it. So, uh, uh, Feynman said when he, you know, he taught himself physics and math, he invented his own notations for things, and then later had to learn the, the standard ones. He was just very creative and very curious, right? He was pushing the boundary. He found his own things much more elegant but he said when he would think about equations and such the different dimensions uh had certain had different colors for him in his mind oh cool so i think just like chanting and you know singing rhyming aids memory i think colors could have could potentially have that too might make a good good project fun thing to try to incorporate where are we i was trying to get in the yeah i agree look up one the Oh, and a, a quick nitpicky note. Uh, yes. When you were reading these uh, in the lesson and it gave the left to right example, and you said that Lego brick was yes. M. 
Is it not that is actually it's M N together. It's a biliteral sign. Oh great. Oh cool. That's that's what I'm here to know. That's great. Yeah, here. And so you <laughs> so kind of fantastic. overspell it because you write. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. You write M N and then N, so it does that a lot, where it's you know kind of overspelling it. I dig that. Levi is voiced. Very nice. It is a completely voiced word. Come to think of it, every segment in Levi is a voiced one. Oh, sure enough. Yeah, never noticed that before. And we were just kidding. Um, so, and so I can actually break this mm -hmm. up for you, this yeah, yeah. Um, symbol. So it's the god Amun. Uh -huh. So it's spelled for some reason with the like the I letter, the E. Uh -huh. uh, and then the M, N, and then the N. And then this four is a god symbol yep. of Amun. So it's uh -huh. like a picture of him. That's the determinative. And the rest would be a phonetic complement. So, like at the end of a word, you kind of put like a picture of what gotcha. it is to show what it is. Okay. Discord, yeah, that we're discording it. Yeah. Hi, Lisa. I like how X word, when you lowercase it like that, kind of looks like the word sword mutated, horde or something. Oh, cool. I yeah. like also that the feather changes direction i guess all the signs do but you just don't see it in two and three all the ones that yeah the ones that face a different way face and they look towards the start of the line to tell you makes sense it's like oh no i need to start reading this when should i start and they're like oh don't worry we got you and they look to where you need to start that was true i think in, in runic writing as well there is a simple trick that will allow you to easily identify the correct direction which to begin. Look for a hieroglyph with a face and read toward it. That's good, yeah. When the figure is facing left, begin reading from the left. Da -da -da. When there are hieroglyphs are stacked on top of each other, the top sign should always be read before the lower sign. Another feature that you might have noticed is group writing. Rather than placing hieroglyphs side by side, they were arranged in a way to reduce empty space. Right, Taller signs stand alone. Smaller signs stacked on top. So new writing systems that come into existence don't usually have this feature. This is, seems really, really old, the varying size of the things. Even if stacking them on top of each other will make them go out of order, like you still oh. stack them on top of each other. How is that? Do you, can you, do you know an example? Uh, oh, none man. come to mind because, like I said, I'm still pretty beginner. Do you know how we might retrieve that compound or where we might see that, the letter combination sign? The MN one, for example. What? Where could we look? Where might uh, we look? Yes. On that Wikipedia page, scroll okay. down and click Egyptian biliteral signs. There we go. And the oh. C also. Whew. So MN. Oh, my goodness. This is a how napa level. A what? A whole nother level. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, okay. I see the grid. I'm in the, L, the M row and the N column. I'm going to zoom in toward that. Yeah. Sure enough. It has two. Sides. Oh, and it lists their gardener codes. Oh, next yeah. To Joy. So that's Y5 is that Lego brick. Let's verify that. Y5? Por que no? My Lego brick. And the... Okay, so... Look look up a bull both ways. So this sign has a phonetic meaning, whereas the God determinative would not. That's mm -hmm. just to represent the concept. Pretty cool. Uh, it's called uniliterals. They represent a single consonant. The ancient Egyptian language also contains biliterals and triliterals, which represent two and three. Alphabet can be found. Oh, found... is that how you say them? No. I've been saying biliteral. Is it biliteral? I'm being a play fool. Oh, okay. It will be helpful to memorize the alphabet. I'd be surprised if it were that way. Bilateral. 
Uh, memorize the alphabet. It will be helpful to memorize the alphabet, no doubt. Not only because they, <laughs> they often occur in text, but also because Egyptologists arrange dictionaries in this order. So, unsure of the meaning of a word, but know how to transliterate it. Knowing the alphabet will help you find the word faster. <laughs> oh, I see. Knowing the order, right? The four H's. There was a club, uh, maybe still exists, the 4-H club. Where it was like hand, heart, home, I don't know what they all were. Let's see, Let's see if that even exists. Positive youth development and mentoring. Hand, head, heart, hands, health. Oh, there we go. And it looks like they're still around. Between the four different types of H. All right, our eagle... Transliteration 3. That's cool. Vulture 3. Read leaf I. Double read leaf Y. Arm Ein. W. Quail chick. Rope curl. That's cute. The rope curl is a later sort of abbreviated form. You know, I got, a, got it. A B. Foot. A P. Stool. F. Horned viper. Mowl, <laughs> and is water, and red crown. How oh, cool. Our mouth. That's what that is. I meant to ask you earlier on what what the, what the this one represents. R is the mouth. What does that remind you of? Uh, ko. Mm -hmm. Changjie. R is the mouth, too. Yeah. What else we got? B foot. No, but the foot... Is not too unlike you, the moon, in its basic directions that it's got. Oh, in terms of the shape of the uh -huh. writing, it. Oh, yeah. Not meaning or anything, but P stool is next to R. Ish. F one. Okay. Oh, if we just rotate that snake figure up ninety degrees, it would be a, a stylized F. That's all you have to do. Oh, yeah. M for the owl. So noon, right, the N shape. Well, no, in the Semitic language, it was mime for water. So this same idea, but applied to the M phoneme. Reish, I think, in Semitic is the mouth one, mouth consonant. House plan, H. Rope, H. Unknown, H. Animal belly and tail. So these four H's are... Um... Ah. The first one, the oh. little house, is regular H, huh. Okay, the green, case. like, twisty rope thing uh -huh. is ha, huh, voiceless pharyngeal fricative. Okay, dig it. This unknown little, I think of it looks kind of like a sunset or something. View through, uh, ver is view through vertical. Huh. Uh -huh. Velar, you think? Ha, huh, it says. Oh, oh, in where are you where are you reading? Uh, the uh, Wikipedia one. Okay, okay. And that's the um, on Uniliterals. Click back. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll let you if you don't mind. I'll just let I'll let you read it while we're looking at it while we look at it on this one. Okay. So okay. And then the this next one, we, the rope one we did, the unknown one. It's saying is gamma. Ka. Uh, voiceless. Okay, Veeler, so X? Yeah. X marks unknown. That see, that's not too out there. Okay, and then animal belly and tail. That one is a palatal fricative, or maybe also a velar fricative. Okay. Probably a palatal one, though. Works for me. Animal belly, palate... Palette and belly, both body parts. Why not? <laughs> of course, it's going to be a body part. Z, door bolt. So I think of the Zine letter. Folded mm. cloth S. Okay. Pool Esh. Wonderful. Does it say for the Q, is that the uvular stop, the hill? Uh, you, yeah, it's Ka. Uh, okay. That uh, reminds me of the here. shape of. Or. The, yeah, it says it can either be that or ejective. It says exact phonetic distinction right. and clear. Of course. Okay, some sort of marked 
post velar one probably and mm -hmm. k as in basket huh it's like a <laughs> smiley face with a little bit of drool the stand mm -hmm. for vessel g okay bread loaf love that tethering rope what is a tethering rope? For like for tethering a horse uh, let's see. If I click on it here on Wikipedia. Oh, okay. Broke. Yeah. Oh, there is also uh, a similar character, apparently, code V15. And it is a tethering rope on a, on top of a pair of legs. There it is. My leg ropes. So, okay, here this resource says... Aha, uh -huh, interesting. From the Middle Kingdom on, replaced more and more by the previous one. So this marked T, maybe a T, fell together with the bread T. Oh, cool. It seems. D as in hand. And J as in cobra. <laughs> this oh. mark D is a J. Got it, yeah. The African voice. Co the cobra, yeah. J. So it would be noteworthy if there was J but not Ch. But I guess that's true of Arabic, too. Arabic, the, the old G has become a J or a J. Oh, this list ch is an alternate pronunciation for the tethering rope. Okay, good. Tethering rope. So, okay, also underline. So underlining for what turned out to be pals. Ch, j, let's say. Chethering. <laughs> and kodra. <laughs> the jobra. So I'm going to look through these and try to memorize. The vulture three. Be nice. Does that, that Wikipedia one... Does it have the Gardner numbers for these? The uh, unit uh, or anywhere? I don't see them on here, actually. Okay. Oh, that's less than ideal. It's in the. Do you have anything that has their? Yeah, yeah, that one has the Gardner numbers. This Uniliterals doesn't. Well, that was maybe it was the transliteration page we were looking at. Maybe. No, I guess no. All right, poly. Okay, and the colors. Yeah. Okay. So we, this one on Wikipedia is quite good. Like I say, I want to know all about the colors involved. So the polychrome vulture, which was some form of liquid, r or r or l or la. Middle Egyptian r a y. So I'm oh, and it shows the different phonetic values for the different stages. It has that's the middle, that's, that's really cool. okay. old, and middle. It may have happened in Greek too. Green feather for y, e, called yod or y. Blue pair of strokes. Is that a? Lady? I know it looks like a feather, but it's called a reed. Reed, thank so you. So it's a plant. Yes, they so shall read it as reed. Okay, I got it. Oh, there, it's a very birdie script otherwise, but not this. Okay. Red forearm for the eye. Yeah. Okay. And the what? It looks, look at that. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's wow. The Arabic letter is just right there, just turned around. And it's W. Oh, yeah. So that may be a connection. When We, we see it in Devanagari too, right? The U shape may connect it all the way to this quail. What or ooh, to woo with a quail. And a red foot. So we've seen the red and, and that one being yellow. Yellow quail wa as in yellow. Red. Oh if you click where it says quail chick uh -huh. there in that box and that has blue, it yeah. does take you to the birds and show there. Up oh, there the yeah. numbers. Yeah, it shows the gardener numbers there when you click on it. Excellent. 
But not all of them have that little blue thing. Hyperlink. Yeah. Okay. Red, lower leg, B. B leg, bleg. Green, mat, for P. Hmm. Okay, there we have the infinity. We'll meet Matup. That's a mat with a P. Yellow horned viper. Yellow quail. Yellow viper for F. So what and F. Oh, let's. Is there any connection between the color and the phonetic features? I don't know. The owl is also yellow. That's. Mm. I think. Maybe. I don't know. The color is mostly. I think just the color they wanted it to be because it's a picture. But. Mm hmm. Ripple of water, black. Interesting. Human mouth, red. Reed shelter. Oh, what? Blue. Well, think of for the water being black. Think of like Homer and the wine dark sea. So, like I'm, in the ancient world, they kind of perceived color a little differently. I'm sorry, I'm going to refuse to perceive to think of Homer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Homer is Bart. No, I'm happy to. Good. Good point. Okay. Uh, twisted green wick for emphatic. Aha. Uh -huh. H blue green sieve or placenta. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, uvular, velar, or speculatively. Uh -huh. Tested multiple colors. Red door bolt. Red folded cloth. Sasha. And that's just the single letter sign. That's pretty. It was quite the brainful. Much simpler what uh, the other related languages did. Jedda. Zauja. Kitta. Kitta. Hel zaujatik muhandisa yasam. Hel zaujatik. Mohendisa Yesen is your wife an engineer. So. Rania Jeddetek Yesem. Rania. Alright. Jeddi. Jeddetik. That's what that is. Rania Jeddetek Yesem. Jeddetek. Rania Jeddetek Yesem. So, what's going on here? When is it ik and when is it ek? Jeddetek. Jeddet. And then yours, like that. Your grandmother. Hmm. This can never find what I want. Let's look at that. Oh, and whenever we're done with this little session of Arabic, I added another uh, resource in the chat, the interactive Rosetta Stone that I saw earlier. Amazing. Thank you. So it's Rania. Jeddetek is your grandmother. Sam. Judy Zaujetek Yakari. Judy Zaujetek Yakari. Zaujet. Now here, Zaujetik. Oh Zaujetik. So what is going on? What's the difference? Zauj et. 
and then an x suffix here, right? Zaujetik. That one for your wife. Any ideas, Levi? Why is it ek here, but ik below? Hang on, it's pretty small on my computer. Yeah, let me uh, inflate it a bit. Judy Zaujetik Yekari. Oh, here in the romanization. No, I was looking at the... Ah. Right. Just, just, the one of them. just the one of them is there. I can't get it bigger, but I meant, yeah, in, the, in my notepad. Sorry, I should have made clear. Oh, yeah, that was already at a good size, but I can also see it bigger. Gee, it wouldn't be because it's feminine. I don't know. I wonder if it's gender of the person you're speaking to, if that gets up more feet. Oh, it could be, or it could also be, uh, no, it wouldn't be phonetic environment. It could be. Uh, unless, I mean, it's translated as your, it could be plural and singular, your in English. Uh, good point. <laughs> So you want to give this one a try? زوجة لبنانية وجدة لبنانية. زوجة. 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 لبنانية. This has a real nice look to it with those two types of love. لبنانية. لب. Is that noon? No. Noon لبنانية. One dot over. What is the one dot on the top? Uh, for the the sort of fence shaped one. Single dot above is N. The combining form. And okay, so that is N. So, Lubna. 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 E. Lubna niha. Oh, you've got the thing muted. Okay, right? The stream? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because otherwise there's right. this really weird echo. Feedback, yeah. Okay, let me just read it to you. Lubnania. Zoja Lubnania. Wajid. Zoja Lubnania. Zoja Lubnania. Wajedda Lubnania. Wajedda Lubnania. Wajedda Lubnania. Yeah. Zoja Lubnania. Wajedda Lubnania. Okay, so it has Lubnania twice. That's right. Same word, same form, even. Yep. Yeah. Oh, look at the different H forms there. Lubnania. In Zauja and the and Lubnania, it's coming, continuing off the preceding letter, but after uh, Jedda, because the D is an ender, we get the absolute H shape. See that? Mm. Yeah, I do. Okay. Good. Zauja. زوجة لبنانية وجدة لبنانية. I don't know what this means, though. I'm afraid my Arabic vocabulary is That's still fine. pretty uh, low. I've got Mohandas is engineer, and then Weled is boy, because it sounds like Yeled, and then so Ya is the vocative, like O in early modern English. There you go, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lebanese Zoja wife and a Lebanese Jedda grandmother. Kittotek Goribe Ye Jorj. Kittote. Kittotek. Kittotek Goribe Ye Jorj. Those words are right here in your notes. I should have figured them out. Oh, yeah, so they are. Well, little, little yeah, same stems. 
Totec, your cat. Totec. Roribe. Roribe. Your cat is weird. Because the cat is definite, the unmarked adjective makes a sentence. Your cat is weird. Yeah, George. And here's the G, what the G has become, a J fricative in this dialect. Right. Hell is the Hel. yes, no? Question marker. Hell qittatek min kuba yasaf. Qittatek. Jaddatek. No, not that one. Qittatek. There we go. Qittatek. Hell qittatek min kuba yasaf. Min kuba. Min kuba. Yeah. Yeah. Sayaf. Hell qittatek min kuba yasaf. Sayaf. Saf. Name Seth. Here's your cat. Uh-huh. From Cuba. So, yes, no, was the first word. Cat of yours from Cuba. جد لطيف و جد لطيف. لطيف. جد, my gra uh, the grandmother, a grandmother. لطيفة. لطيفة. Is kind. و جد لطيف. My grandmother is kind. No, the, a grandmother. is kind and a grandfather is kind. Uh-huh, right, yeah. That doesn't that doesn't make a very good sounding sentence in English either, and what that is is noun phrases. A kind grandmother. This is what we have to pay special attention to. I find that is when they're both unmarked it's just a noun phrase, not a sentence. Ya kari hal zawjatik ustadha? Ya kari hal zawjatik ustadha? Oh, I know how it works in Hebrew. If they're both unmarked like that, uh -huh. then you need to use the pronoun copula. Uh, so if you want to say the grandmother is kind, you would say grandmother she, she kind. Okay, cool. That's helpful. Yeah, Kari El Zaujatik Ustada is your wife. Is your Zaujatik. Zaujatik, rather. Is that the same one? Yeah, ik. So it could be a case marking thing too, that ik versus ek. Is your wife. So here it's subject case. يا كري هل زوجتك أستاذة؟ أستاذة بروفيسور زوجتك أستاذة يا كري زوجتك أستاذة يا كري بروفيسور كري زوجة لبنانية زوجة لبنانية زوجة the zauja, the wife, a wife, and this one is so both are unmarked, means a Lebanese wife. Qittatek zakiya ya bob. Qittatek zakiya ya bob because it's definite because it's marked by a possessor. Your cat, that's a sentence. Your cat is clever. Yeah, Bob. Hel zaujatak urduniya ya Sam? Hel zaujatak urdu... Urduniya ya Sam. Oh, Jordanian, we say. Jordanese. <laughs> that's interesting. Jordanian. هل زوجتك أردنية يا سام؟ Is your wife Jordanian? Sam. قطة. قطة. She's just a cat. هل زوجتك فرنسية يا سام؟ هل زوجتك فرنسية يا سام؟ 
is your Zaujatek, your wife, French, Sam. يا مايك هل جدتك تعبانة؟ يا مايك هل جدتك Alright, what's this? دي دي با يا مايك هل جدتك تعبانة؟ تعبانة 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 Is مايك so يا yeah, مايك مايك هل جدتك your grandmother tired عند أروى قطة عيد oh this is إيه well in end عند أروى قطة it's interesting أروى عند this is exists there to her. عند أروى قطة. Hey, Ricochet's back. Welcome. Doing a bit of Arabic, as you can see. And we're really seeing. Tairasan. Yah. Yahoo. I don't know that one. What is Yahoo? It sounds positive. Indeed. Yahoo. It's like hi. Oh, it's like hi. Okay. Actually, if you wouldn't mind reading aloud what is being communicated, that'd be really helpful, Levi. Oh, if I just like read the chat? Uh huh. Okay. And or so I think this is the first time we're seeing it in this course. The عند. existential, yeah, have عند. or to exist. So in this case, there Arwa. is a possessor. To her, there is a cat. Arwa has cat. Very fine. Although getting a bit sleepy, it's getting late. Genki des. Oh, before we go, Tyler, I wanted to show you one thing on the oh, that's right. Rosetta Stone Let's go ahead and do that, yeah. interactive Rosetta Stone. We started Egyptian today. Just in case you're not. Uh, so if you find one of these lines where it has like the little oval around. Yes, the cartouche. Yep. Uh... See if you can piece those together. Don't look Ooh, at the little wow. square in the corner. That spoils it. All right, right. But since you know some of the individual letters, see if you can figure out. Boy. All the cartouches in here are the same name, so. Right. Okay. And you can mouse over it to make it clearer. Well, it's awful small. Let's see. If I full screen. Yeah, that's no good. I might. Ooh, I want to resize this. Is it control plus? But no, it doesn't because it's an image. It oh. and, yeah, alas. So let's see. Yeah, it does. Did oh, that... hover over it? All right. I so can you read what's in any of the cartouches? Attempting to now. So the reeds okay. are looking rightward in this line, so I should draw from the end. So I've got the mat, which I think was a P, and the bread was a T, and then this floppy scepter shape here. <laughs> I think this is Ptolemy. And the yeah, it's got the double reed for Y at the end, right? In this it's five lines. So the sixth line, left end of the tablet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so what is? It? Then we have a lion. Is that the determiner? And that yeah, the, the lion is gonna be. Uh, it's a phonetic letter that wasn't in the chart because it was a pretty late addition uh -huh. after they'd been hanging out with the Greeks. But it's an L sound. L for lion. lion. How nice. I'm pretty sure that's Ptolemy. Yep, you see it. It's the P, the 
that mat shape and then yep. the loaf of bread loaf and of bread. so on. Yep. And the annotation together with the god Soteres, who... No, that's off my screen. Okay, who are gone to sleep with religious ceremonies in addition to set up a statue in the King Ptolemy living forever, beloved by Ptah, God Epiphanes, Lord of Goodness, that it may be known by his other name as Ptolemy, the defender of Egypt, each time he goes by water. Goes by water. Oh, okay. Do you see the comment, Levi, about your sound level? Can you bring it down a bit? Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, we are on a Discord call, yes. Sorry, hmm. I didn't see that sooner. I've got things rearranged. I have bit. mute. I don't have turn. I don't. How do I you guess, turn your sound down? I guess if you maybe you just move the mic a little away from me. From oh, I have headphone mic. I'll just speak softly. Is that okay? Should should be a step in the right direction, I guess. How is this sound, everyone? Ricochet, is this good? Definitely. Just trying to speak loud. Jad la tifa wa That was my, the, actually not even the, it's a uh, grandfather. And this is not marked, so it's kind, a kind grandfather. What jad la That's the first one is grandmother. And what did you... Oh, you said after that lesson we should look at the Rosetta Stone? Oh, was that your suggestion? But we've done that now. Was it, or was it something else you had suggested after we finished? Do you remember, Levi? Isoyo? Oh. Opsoyo? Tap to right. -click. Oh, thank you. Okay. Let's see. I can't hear you anymore. No. Right click on you, and there's a volume bar. So in my Discord, which is here now, how do I right click on? <laughs> Don't sorry, please. Can't confirm. Uh, let's see. Where could I? Yeah, we're very new. I especially am extremely new at this Discord thing. Seems like a, it's got, a, got great potential, but I need to learn my way around a bit, as you can tell. So here I have a thing that says Levi Acord. If I right click, there we go. Excellent. Thank you so much. So when and if you can return Levi, we now know how to adjust that. And I didn't have you muted. Remove block, not today. Kick ban. <laughs> right click on Levi's name, thank you. Then he's gone. Profile message call, do I need to call you? Hello, can you hear me now? No, I can. Okay, good. It's much softer. Let me. Oh, we're no longer in the voice channel. We're right. called. Now. That's a different thing. <laughs> Good. I'm. I'm glad you're enjoying Ricochet. <laughs> no longer the voice. Um, what? Where would you like to be, Levi? Yeah. Uh, am I audible now? You are. But so I was able to adjust the sound level, but I think I went too far. Now, how can I adjust it from this point? I wonder. Uh, do you want to join the way you had before? That's okay. Good. And how do I get back to... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> this must be riveting viewing, too. <laughs> hmm. Not so much. Copy to help. Right-click on his picture.
How do I get back to where I was? Oy vey. Come on. Take me home, country roads. There we go, that's not like it. I want that then. Hello? Now I can hear you. Okay. Okay, we're back. Am I too loud still? Nope, not at all. Very much the contrary. Okay. Yeah, I do apologize. The It looks like I have a notification there. now. I see. Oh, oh uh, I think you're still call. No, it ended the call. Okay, good. Uh, we're good. No issue. Uh, the reason I wanted to point out that Rosetta Stone thing is that the first guy who was trying to translate this is he saw that exactly yes. same thing where he was like, "Oh, that's Ptolemy," and figured that out, and that was how he got started. I did have. So that. I just wanted you to go through that same process of discovery. Yeah. All right, we're struggling with the levels. Maybe let's try there-ish. I had actually read about that story, so uh, it was a little bit primed. It wasn't a complete, but I, we did pass over the P and the T. Now the M in that one, let's go back real quick. Where is my... Okay. It's not I, the same I'm, M as we saw before, was it? Uh, there's two, right? There's the... Okay, Ricochet says I am still too loud. Did you adjust my volume? Yes. Okay. Where is this? There's two different M shapes. There's the owl and there's also the, I don't know what to call it. Right, looks like a book lying down on the table maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of. That's right. That's what we see in this. That one. Yeah. Cartouche. Below the lion. But what's the one? Okay. Good. What's the bendy one between the lion and the PT cluster? Uh, let me see. Those are just going. Meanwhile. I don't know. I'm guessing O. Indeed, that would be called for there. Uh, maybe they, I mean, if this is late enough that the, it's kind of a Greek name, maybe that's a later edition. They're like, oh, we can do some vowels. It's fine. Yeah. I'm actually not sure about this. Symbol. That was if we the... could figure out what that was, we could look it up and buy its gardener number, but I don't know what it is. Okay, let's do a bit of Korean. Oh, time for checkpoint. Okay. Let's go. This cow does not drink milk. Isonun uyurul an mashayo. Isonun uyurul mashiji an ansumnida. That works too. Does not do doing of. This movie is happy um. and sad. E yonghwanun. Happy is hangbok hago sulpoyo, I think. E yong huanen. Yong huanen. Hangbok hago. Hangbok hago. The hago for the conjunctive form to be happy and it's yes ending. And then this, the last adjectival verb will be just inflected. Sulpoyo. Sulpoyo. A fish and a spider. Mulgogi wa. Okay, they all start with Mulgogi. Kami is the. Eh, no. Gachi. Tokiri. Kokiri is the elephant. Kami. Gachi. Saving up channel points. For Hindi, 
we can do that next. Uh, pointers. You know, well, one nice thing coming from a Japanese background is that the word order and the clause order is essentially the same. You have, there's more work with like pronouns. M me, me for I, me, mere is possessive. Mujhe means to me. But I think, if you think within Japanese terms, especially these early courses, uh, yeah, the early part of the course, lots of parallelism there. Uh, one thing I this? would say with Hindi is, uh, in terms of the pronunciation, it helps to get comfortable with <laughs> retroflex sounds. Konmuri. I know those were difficult for me to pronounce at first. Right. And they still kind of sound like they have an R in them. And what you do is you kind of curl your tongue back Okay. And you go, da, sha, da. things like that. Yeah, maybe let's put it, to make it really clear, put it between vowel sounds. So, arta, arta is the retroflex T. Arta. Can you do the aspirate? Kumida. Arta. Arta, yep. Arta. Okay, ga, sarajoyo. Cho namja. No, it's this one. Please do not send me too many messages, you creep, is the sentence. All right. Speaking of uh, oh, the Japanese, that, sorry, that's the, the sentence that we're Yeah, getting. you said it before it came up on right. screen, and then I was like, wait. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to be reading Ricochet's comments. Oh, that's all right. I've got it. Well, I mean, it would be helpful, actually. Failed. Please do not send me... How are we going to order this? So, speaking of Japanese and Hindi word order, Korean is quite similar, too, in the way that the sentence structures itself. What are we going to put first in this case? I think it would be... Messages... Too many... Sending do not do, please. It's like German... Uh, got the... Wait, what's it saying? The uh, German gargly says, R so without... Almost like the German gar so that would be the uh sound without the gargle. Which language are we talking about? I don't quite know what that means. Please do not send me too many. So I think the very first thing to name in this one would be mess messages. Object. No. Boneji. The sending of it with a negative polarity one. Ma shipshio. Ma shipshio. A negative imperative. Hindi R. Ah, oh, okay. The R sound. There we go. Oh. So they're da. Arta, those are stops with what sound to our ears like art. But then there's several R phonemes in Hindi too. There's the basic R, and then there's the R, 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 R and the aspirate R, R, R. We'll hear some in a minute. Let's do a bit of Hindi. All right, Mashipshu. I think that's the complete sentence. It's messages too many, sending do not do. Oh, what I think this is saying is, so like a German R in the back of your throat, uh -huh, it's going to use like the back part of your tongue, you whereas go. this is more, it uses like the front of your tongue and you kind of curl it backwards into, further into your mouth. Does that make sense? So instead of using the, if it, if that doesn't make sense, either you can fix it. Oh, sorry. I was just, uh, uh just. <laughs> good, Ricochet. Might... Okay, Ricochet's got it, so we're good. Great. Please learn Yongo English again. 고양이가 먹지만 음식을 싫어해요. 먹지만 eats but 음식을 싫어요. Hates the food. The cat eats but hates. The food. I have a hard time with this man ending. 그래서 동물이 달려요. G man works as a unit. 그래서 동물이 달려요. That's the running one. 그래서 would be then the animal runs. 박물관에서 사진을 찍읍시다. 박물관에서 사진을 찍읍시다. At the museum. Sajinil. I took pictures. 
clicked some pics. Okay. Oh, we'll still be here. Well, maybe let's continue with Korean, and then we'll do Hindi when Ricochet gets back. Okay, quick or note some Egyptian about too. the Egyptian. Yeah. Uh, on this, I think doing the one like lesson of this Egyptian hieroglyphs.net is a good idea, like equivalent to one Duolingo level. Gotcha. Let's read a bit more. You might have noticed that there aren't any vowels in the alphabet. Exists, the only they're... concern I have is at the bottom of the page on mine, uh, some of the hieroglyph exercises on the bottom don't load right. Okay. Because I think they used images. I don't know if it loaded on yours. We shall find out, I suppose. See when we get there, we're about okay. two-fifths down. But I was never particularly interested... Okay, the current research and pronunciation, I was never too interested in it, says this author. If you are, then I suggest grabbing the book listed. All right. Simply describe general conventions, use introductory, add an eh between the consonants. Yep. Amun versus Amun versus Amen, but in general, adding E eh between constants just fine. Alright, so we get... I guess we looked ahead to this chart earlier, but... Oh yeah, that's this the is, chart This we is a, a subset of them, I guess. Na as in neat, R as in ready. The R mouth. That's the unilateral. H for the house, yep. Uh, tw was it a twisted chord or something for the emphatic H? This one mm -hmm. says Kh as in Bach. Kya, similar to the preceding. <laughs> K-Y-A-H. That's the palatal fricative, the Kya. Kya. Okay. Z, S is in sand. S, S is in sand. S is in fish. K is in kite. Okay, it's just for... The Ch as in chart, all right. D as in dog, J as in sledge. All right, some real words. Sedjim. I wish it told us the meaning, but let's connect it with what we know. So, so what's this fox ear looking S letter? Do you know what that depicts? Well, it must be, I don't, it must be S and J though. Okay, uh-huh. So if we go to good old bilaterals here, yeah, the bilateral signs. It was sa and ja. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it failed to render. I've just got an X shape in that position. Uh, are you looking at? The rows are the first letter in the component, and the columns the second. Yes. Columns are the second. Oh. Huh. It I may just know. be a partial presentation here. Sejemef. Iris. Huh. Iris. Necher. Oh, that's the word for God. Necheru. Hieroglyphs are visual representations of objects or ideas familiar to ancient Egyptians. Gardner arranged all the hieroglyphs into a sign list, which included 26 categories. A few different ways hieroglyphs are used. When they are used to represent real-world things, they're called ideograms. Hieroglyph khr represents a face. When it is used as an ideogram, it carries the meaning of face. When not used as that, used for its phonetic value. You might be wondering how you'd know whether a hieroglyph was being used as an ideogram or not. Phonograms are ones used rep representing the phonetic value. Using phonograms, scribes could spell out words. For example, we could combine the hieroglyphs for mouth, R, and water ripple, N, the alphabet above, and create the word for name, Ren. Independently, each hieroglyph represents a different idea, mouth and water. Hmm. Together they form the word name. Determinative is a hieroglyph that does not have a phonetic value, so it's not transliterated. They replace the end of words and provide a general meaning of the word. For example, we not, may not know what the word pet pet, pet pet might mean, but the leg determinative 
gives us a rough idea of movement. This type of movement could be walking, running, stomping, dancing, or something else. Trampling is this word. Pet, pet. A diagram represents an idea or concept. Vertical dash follows the glyph when used as an ideogram. That's fascinating. Phonogram represents vocal sound. Phonetic. Her <clears throat> preposition on. R preposition to. Glyph at the end of some words that gives the general meaning. In. Legs in. Pet to pet. Movement. Trample. This section will contain either vocabulary list, sign list, or both. It would be great if you memorized. It's not required. While you interact. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, bilaterals. That's what we saw there. The ear is the eye. And it just gives eye. us a few bilaterals. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just a few to get used to it. And there's our friend, the Lego brick. Me. So it's not like it's a portmanteau of two graphs. It's, it's the distinct sign. We couldn't predict mm -hmm. the value. Okay. Non-compositional. NB. Triliterals. Anch. Nefer and Nacher. Identify the direction of the hieroglyph. The hieroglyph should be read right to left, left to right. Then in your head, identify the order in which each individual glyph should be read. Oh, and let's see if you can read it before you look at the oh, right. transliteration. Or you can follow along with the yeah. transliteration. So, don't know this first bird. I don't recognize it. Probably a bilateral sign, but I know N and F are there, and then this plant stock. Then we have the quail chick W or U, and then the A, ah, and that would be a determinative for. Nope, that's sign. an owl. Oh, not the it's vulture, but the owl. owl. Okay, gotcha. So. The owl is looking straight at the camera, the vulture is looking <laughs> to the side. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, good. Makes sense the way owls do. So gum is the biliteral one at the beginning, and then na fa as a, and then a swa biliteral, and then oh no, no sa, no no not okay. quite a swa. Yeah, uh, sa is one, and then wa is the quail chick. So wa so this owl is an m right, and then pr is the determinative. He found him in the house. I think that's just the word for house, right? Just a determinative house. Okay, would be yeah, part wouldn't of the spelling. Pronounced. You're right, yeah. The suit, the T. Oh, what's going on? See, I told you there was some rendering issues on the Ah, indeed you did, yeah. Because there, I think it's using pictures on some of them, and then the pictures don't load, I guess. Is the issue. That is much shame. All right, well, let's get what we can from this little bi interlinear thing. Well, three has one. Yep. Nasut biti nib tawi nib iw nib ma'ah etr. That's the transliteration yep. for the picture above it that didn't load. Yep. Lord of the two lands. All right, the word... L oh, let's see. Lord is repeated there. Lord of the two lands, Lord of Diadem. So I'm thinking that's NB. And that's also part of this name, Ebmatre. It's a component. Nasut looks like a feminine noun. Egypt. And then. Two lands, Lord. All right, and the next one that is to be transliterated, it's got that fox ear owl. Also, N, F, and then this rod shape. D is the hand, T is the bread. I think that's an eating determinative, eating figure. Then a reed. This is Imen. 
Yes, the reed and then the mn and then the n and then the That's the god, god Amun. Is Amun. Sejim. Sejim Nef Medet Imun. He heard the speech of Amun. Sejim Nef. Oh, is this an ear? Oh, this ear? Medet is like Medeber in Hebrew, I bet. Is that speech? Speak? Speeching? <laughs> Uh, or here. so this, uh, I don't know which part it is. Let's see. After the, after the horned viper. Yeah. Mid uh, it must be that. Yeah. What's mid -ditch. So, yeah, I think that's like medeber in Hebrew. Very nice. I wish we got all of the, the exercises. But let's enjoy what we get. And then Royal Wife Tia. Hamet Nasut. Or Nesawit or something. So I see the T the feminine T suffix in one of these. At least one of those as well. Let's see if the rendering trouble is there in this one too. Looks like. I have an MA in Egyptian Art and Archaeology. Still enjoy translating texts in my spare time. Okay. Uh, Look, they any... made a... Uh -huh. In that paragraph about the author, huh? they made a little mistake. It says, I live in a farm with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's technically not true. I mean, not false. <laughs> I made my day. I guess they forgot that they were writing in first person. Yeah. <sighs> writing in an average of second person. <laughs> <laughs> farm with his wife. <laughs> this just doesn't make <laughs> sense. That's fantastic. <laughs> it sounds farm. like it means someone else's wife. Yep. <laughs> cool. Is there room for me too? <laughs> <laughs> What's the... Pa or any requests, Levi, for language? To do on Duolingo? Uh, I... I am getting kind of yeah, sleepy. When Ricochet yeah. comes back, we can <laughs> do the Hindi. Or we may have to do it tomorrow. Yeah, it might be a tomorrow thing. It's just past midnight. Where are we at? 2.30. Oh, boy, we've got a long time. Well, I think they followed us on Twitter. Let me check. Maybe let's listen to the recitation in the meantime. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Good outro. Isn't that a nice word? A back formation? Outro from intro? If you break it down into its parts, yeah. it's a bit absurd. Wait, so there's no introduction? Not that I've heard. Yeah, not that I've heard. I've never heard of an introduction. <laughs> the relong. <Yeah. laughs> Hal iti maheshwarani sutrani Atha prathamo dhyayaha Prathama padaha Oh, I can't hear it. Right, yeah, makes sense. I'll back it up a bit. Kalguru. No, I, uh, I got it. I just turned my audio. Oh, uh, Ricochet is back. Oh, good. Okay. Let's go ahead and do some Hindi then. Glad you made it. We're about to turn into pumpkins here. But let me know what questions come up as we go over this Hindi lesson. <laughs> Glad you made it. In fact, we were just doing some Hindi. 
a day or two ago. No, no, let's do let's do uh, one lesson or so, and they call it a new. Are you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but it's, it's good to have requests. <laughs> I don't know. Hardly working. More like we were just looking at Sanskrit, which is basically old Hindi. Yep. Classically. A long time ago. Without a word for car there. But anyway, let's get to know the writing system a bit here. The ones with the dots below, those are ones that, hit, that Sanskrit didn't have. Sabzia. Sabzia. Right, so the modified J is a Z. Kamra. This one seems from romance. Gari. Gari. Note that it's voiced. What does that mean? Did it come from Celtic? <laughs> Anda. Anda. This one is has a retroflex cluster, retroflex N, retroflex D. Anda. And listen for the R-like quality, like Levi was talking about. Anda. Although it's not terribly pronounced that way in Hindi. They tend to dentalize. Gardi. Gardi. It's a little bit more of a back da, than the dental one. Kamra. Yeh mera kamra hai. Yeh is mera. first subject. Okay, now to compare it to Japanese for a sentence structure. Yeh is kore. Kore wa? Mera kamra watashi no heya. And he. The verb inflects, but it's this. It marks person and number. So this is my room. It's the very same word order even between Hindi and Japanese. Tumhari gaadiyan achi hain. Gaadiyan. Tumhari. Tumhari, your gaadiyan. Cars, plural, suffix. Achi hai. So, anata no uh, kuruma wa achi hai. Ii desu. Cars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let's do a little breakdown of the script just to see how the principle of it. Cars are good. Achihe. So I recommend going to this online keyboard. And it'll convert a lot of them. So it's a real simple way to get the characters. Oh, wow. What's up? Okay, the select language box. I just now processed what that does. I've You're right, I ignored it for time. a long time too, yeah. It's especially handy for getting between them, like I often do on stream. So this lays out the whole grid. The consonants are in a really logical order. The shape of them is arbitrary, in relation to the shape of the letter to the sound of the consonant. But the way they're ordered, let me just read through it. Ga ka ga ga na all made in the same place. Same for the next four rows here. Ja cha ja ja nya, da ta da da na, da ta da da na, ba pa ba ba ma. And in fact, the order of the kana mirrors this order, with with a few little adjustments. So at the beginning of the alphabet would be the vowels here, there on the right. A a i i u u, r r l l a i o a o are all the vowel phonemes. A, E, U, A, O are there. The same order. Japanese gets its order from the Indic tradition, the Sanskrit literary tradition. And then it's Ga and Ga, right? Ga, Kiku, Keko, all the combinations. There was no Cha in Old Japanese, so the Sa is what's substituted for it. Sashi, Su, Se, So is the paddle series. Tachitsu, Teto. I'm mixing them a little. Tachitsu, Teto. Dental, there was no retroflex, of course. And then nani nune no, with the nasal following. Then it's ha hi hu he ho, it was an old P, with mami mu me mo, the nasal following. Then it's, oh, here we have some nice, look at that, Levi, these transliterations for the the newer letters. So that'd be a pa, a ha, oh, for all the... a, z, yeah, the ones that had to be added. R, r, the two R's, and f is a dotted. So it just takes memorization for these, but, oh, so to show the principle of it, I always like to show this, if you type K-A, that's G. Long A, ah, that it just adds a stem from this, right? So the K, this is the K consonant, that first one on the left. 
That's ka. The vowel is already built in. If you just put the k constant, that's already ka. And so that's you'll right. need to very first add. In fact, if you want a k by itself, you'll have to add the consonant ending mark, the halan. And then, so the, the second row here, ki, ki, short and long vowels. And then ku looks like this. Ku, like that. There's also, uh, let's do here, k with antenna on top. And ku, which adds a stem and puts the antenna, antenna on top of the stem. These are all simple consonants. We can also do things like kr, k followed by r, combines this way. There's a little leg sticking out from that intersection. So that's a little tricky, but once you know the basic shapes, it's, it's doable. <laughs> Just got to memorize these 25 plus, 25 stops, plus yara laba, which Japanese also mirrors, ya, ya yu yo. Rarirurero, and then the V series, a W, Wa, Wo. Then Sanskrit has these four frig, oh, sorry, Sanskrit and Hindi both have the Sh, Fr, S, H letters at the end of that. Anyway, this is real handy to use because it will both convert it and you can click to get your letters that you want. Levi? Uh, if you get kind of tripped up about the combination ones, like we had this KR and stuff, uh, don't Is worry about ka it. Ghar Bharat still, hai. I'll go with those a little bit. But if you know the, you know what the basic shapes are, most of the time it's pretty obvious. But sometimes it can be a little confusing. So really, the Devanagari writing is sort of a step in between alphabets like we have and the Korean writing system in the way that, that it combines into syllable blocks. It goes in two dimensions instead of just one dimension like you have for an alphabet, the way Korean script does. Two yeah, I guess so. Is hathi ka ghar bharat hai? Is, I think it's a pointing word, like this one. Is. Yeah. This hathi elephant, possessive. Kaghar, his house. Bharat. Bharate is India. And the Japanese, the word order, bit by bit, is Kono Zosan no Ie wa Bharate. Uh, Indo des. So, very same type of structure. Is this elephant's home? Actually, in English, it's quite close to. The possessive marker is its own word here. Ka, kind of like no. Is India. Ye guardian lal hai. Ye guardian. Ye guardian lal hai. Lal hai. It's these cars. So ye is plural. Yaha singular. Ye. Guard. The gari is the singular car. Guardian. Guardian plural. Lal. I think it was red. Lal. Hai. Kono kuruma wa. Uh, akai desu. Word for word. Ye guardian lal hai. Panch kamre. That's weird. Panch kamre. Levi, what's panch? Levi, you there? Oh, muted. I guess he did. Maybe he stepped away. It's five rooms. Main us ghar oh, mein five rooms. Yeah, I <laughs> Good timing. I know how that sounds, but I did actually say it. <laughs> I believe. Me us ghar me. We see the two. So here's the, the contrast between. Me. Me, I, and. Me. Me, with a higher vowel. In the house. And as in Japanese, we got post positions that come after the nouns. Rehta he hum. This is living is. So. It is watashi wa uskar, that is that house. Us. Yeah. Reta. So, sono ana, ano, ano ie ni, ana ie no naka ni. Reta hun is sunde imas. I live in that house. Yeah, gari meri hai. Yeah, gari. Oh, it's a long e. That's noteworthy. 
So the singular has long e at the end, but then for guardian, short e with y. Merihe. Yahagari merihe. Kono kuruma wa watashi no desu. There's no wa, of course. Not, there's no topic marker, but there is case marking in Hindi instead. This car is mine. So in terms of grammar, Hindi is really it's a bit like European languages in having plural forms of verbs and nouns, verb agreement, cases. But in terms of the phrase structure and their order, quite like Japanese. Ye meri gaadiyan hai. Ye meri gaadiyan hai. These my cars are. Kore wa watashi no kuruma desu. These are my cars. Is in What's all that? of the languages that have, didn't you say that all the ones that have the verb at the end tend to have similar grammar? Well, and to like the extent that I know them, yeah, they're they're exactly parallel. When you when you order your syntax that way, it just leads kind of inevitably to certain sentence structures and not others. Iskamri, plural. Iskamri me in them. Raj katahe. Kono heya ni, kono heya ni wa raju ga tabemasu, tabete imasu. In these rooms. Oh, maybe this is a case form. What do you think, Levi? Is it plural comedy or is it going to be like a dative or something? Uh, I'm not sure that the case has been so meticulously Kamri. preserved. So I'm guessing it is plural. Okay. Wait, what is the is it's for this? Oh, that's kind of nice. Is. You just take off the two letters at the beginning of this, and you get the Hindi. This is is. So I wonder if it would be if this is specifically is. plural is comedy. So if you get right, get well, the you one can't right. say in this room. Exactly. I'm going to guess that it's singular, and if it turns out to be plural, I'll owe you a cloak. In this room, Raj eats. Raj eats in this room. I think it's a case form, maybe dative singular. Because it sounds a bit odd to say he eats in these rooms. It's not impossible. The translation is in this room. Now here, it's not... Oh, because it was kamra. This one, ghar, is like is really consonant final, not ghara. It's not gender marked. Ghar me in the house. Char kamri hai. What's this one, Levi? Let's see. In the house, uh, four rooms. Good. Uh, there are four rooms in the house. So yeah. So it is. Ghar. Uchi ni. Uh, uh, yotsu no heya ga arimasu. Heiaga, that would be different. Different word order. Hey, that one, I don't think, you know, with the numeral right before the verb, I don't think Hindi does quite that way. Here's an important difference. The preferred order for Japanese, I think, the unmarked order would be Heiaga yotsu arimasu. Maybe it's a different counter term. Do you know, Ricochet? How would you say four rooms in Japanese? What counter would you use? There are four rooms. Heiaga. Yondai arimas? I don't know. In the house are four rooms. I think I said pretty much the same thing. Kya yaha kamra hara hai? With this kya, oh, that's kind of like ka, but going at the other end, marking a question. Yaha oh, kamra. Uh, Taira sensei, uh, I have a question for you. Hi, dozo. Do you prefer me being on the audio like this or um, on the typing? Chat. I kind of prefer audio, at least for right now. For uh, what do you prefer? Okay. Uh, in a, w there's pluses and minuses. Yeah. I think for both. Uh, I feel like I experience less lag on the chat because right? uh, on the audio I have to wait for it to appear on the screen. Gotcha. But well, I you... like being able to interact directly. Like, there's like literally no lag between when I say and when you hear. You know. That's on the on the chat. There's no lag. That's nice. Yeah, I see. 
What's this Hara? Oh, uh, Ricochet has responded. Yeah. Pro- I would say, probably just say, I don't know how to say those. Hey, yeah, is, hey, yeah, is rude. Uh-huh. Hey, yeah, is rude. And then, yotsu arimasu. Hey, yeah, ga yotsu arimasu. Do yeah. I know this he kanji? Have well, I learned that for Chinese before? I don't or believe we've seen it, question. but if, as you can readily see, it'd be broken down into Y R N L. Let's well think. Maybe you've seen. It. Uh, we have it in some Korean words. We make it nice and big mm-hmm. to think about. Takoboto. I don't know what that is. Is that a app? It's just uh. Tatsu ro and then the right hand side asset, which I think is the city. That one is city walls, that's right. Tatsu ro. <laughs> or it's Oyom. Kya yahakamra. Hara. Green. Okay, we're not hooked up with that. Is so what? This room is green? Is this room green? Kono heya wa midori desu ka? Hara is green. Oh. Hara. Uh, hara, it is green. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, let's see. There. Let's see what it tells oh, us wow. for Heya. That's an ominous little logo here for Takaboto. <laughs> the uh, like the unhappy <laughs> octopus with really it's... short legs. Oh, Tako. There we go. Yeah, it is an octopus. Stumpy octopus. Yeah. It's ominating at us. Really Let's find cool. out. This is very nice, though. It looks like friendly, user friendly. Heya, room, chamber, apartment, flat. So, room or rooms. Sumo Heya. Stable. Koyuko, Mayuko wa heya ni haitta. Heya. <laughs> it's pretty close to, in sound, heya and heya. Heru. Heya go. Heya go. So, when do you, do you know what this phenomenon is called when you have that voicing? Do you know the Japanese name? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, like when, yeah, you make a compound word and then it gets. Uska well, gora like origami has it as well. Origami does have it. Yeah. That's, that's rendaku, I that's think. The, that's the one. Good. Yeah, here's how it's written. Ren means connect. It's Y J W J. This one. And the daku means muddy, and that was the phonetics ter- phon- phonetician's term for voiced. Muddy. So that's an E W L I. <laughs> I'm just having the worst luck with this input. So over here in Express Land, of course, it'll be EI. Maybe Old MacDonald was telling us about Tsangjie inputs. That's what it was about, the EI, EIO. Oh, like Old MacDonald had a farm. I was so confused. I was thinking of the restaurant when you Not said that McDonald's. One. That's Young MacDonald. The son, <laughs> the first, the father had a farm. The son decided to start a burger restaurant chain. Uska ghora, that's the horse word. Mez bar he. Uska his horse. Mez bar he is on the table. This is quite like Japanese. Kare no mez uma wa table no ue ni. Arimasu, it would be. So I have to add a bit of glue. I've always been... Oh, okay, for the uh, counting words. Ricochet's got a good point here. There is... Would that be Nigen or something? As listed as a counter for rooms, but I don't think it's the actual counter. Also check Jisho. 
Uses your two. Okay, cool. Thank, thank you for checking. It's very nice. What were you saying, Levi? Uh, this maze word uh -huh. for table yeah. reminds me of mesa. In me Spanish. too. Yeah. No, if they're related. Did we look it up? Dama. I don't recall. Dama. That's fascinating. I'm not familiar with that Dama reading. Oh, futa ma. That's what it is. Do you see the uh, the reading of the numeral counter oh, wow. word phrase there. So futa is the native one, as in futatsu and futsuka yeah. with an altered vowel. Futari, we also have it for two people. Futama. Sounds kind of old-fashioned to me. But we do see oh. ma as a reading for the interval character. Aida being and a... So. Anyway, this, this junction muddiness for rendaku. Is the, that is the name of the phenomenon. Very good memory there. Okay. This kanji means room. This one looks like the gate and then the sun. A and A. It means interval, space between. We have it in shiga, okay. jikan. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of you course, recognize yeah, that one. Seen it before. Uh, and it is and used in Chinese. To the ma part? It's, yeah, can be read as ma. In Japanese, okay. in sorry, in Chinese itself, it is a counter for rooms, so it'd be appropriate there. There in the fourth tone, garmi ik kamrahi, in the house. It sounds like a camera, but it's one room. It is one room in the house. Ie ni wa hitotsu no heya ga arimasu. Or oh, would that be hitoma? If it was one and interval, so in this system it's M A N A. It's something else there. All right. I need, oh, that's too much. This is the express one. It's just gonna be A A. There. Ay ay ay! Help me. Okay, Jisho will know, but let me try this taco boto. Okay, like a, it seems like a portmanteau of octopus and robot. Takoboto. Iken, six feet, or hitoma, one room. That's pretty cool. How far does it go? <laughs> what would it be for three rooms? If this one continues counting natively for a while, I'm going to be delighted. Three, try, san, aida. It doesn't list it as a word. What does Jisho tell us? Yeah, not as a single word. Yeah, it doesn't go beyond two, just like study. So. Wo kamri me hai? Wo kamri me hai. That is in the room. He is in the room. It could be he or she. Ghar mein char kamre hain. Ghar mein char kamre hain. In the room, four rooms. Sorry, in the house. There are four rooms. Char kamre in the house. Yeah, I'm in favor of that. Keep it simple with tsu. Oh, uh, Tyler, you mentioned this, uh, kamare word sounding like camera, but not meaning that. Uh, the word camera in English is actually distantly related to this word for room. Mm -hmm. Do you know the connection? It's the camera obscura. Mm -hmm. And what else is it? Oh, chamber is related there too. Chambre. Chambre. Think, right, what that excrescent B, the lovely one. That's right. Okay, everyone, have a good night. I'll say, Oyasumi nasai. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you next time. Bye -bye. Thanks for all Thanks you for all your help, Levi. Oh, you're welcome. What were you gonna say? I said, oh, you're welcome. Oh, uh, before that, were you were you starting to say something?
Uh, I said thanks, good night. <laughs> Sounds like a winner. All right. Take care, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.